Hi, Sukomi. Thanks for joining us on the Channels Book Club. The pleasure is mine. And I've been enjoying your book. Um, 1,000 plus businesses. 1,000 practical. plus practical business ideas and directory of money sources. Why do we need a book like this? I mean, the answer is a bit obvious, but what went through your mind when you... You wrote this. Um, um, thank you so much for having me. And um, this, this is a question that keeps coming up all the time. And um, the answer to that is in the book itself, starting from um, a kind of um, a rhetorical question from my dad that most people will leave school and then he keeps getting CVs, he keeps hearing that, oh, my son is yet to secure a job, you know, and then. He, he just asks. So is your dad like a HR manager or is he <laughs> or something? How do... No, I think, you know, the normal um, um, close-knit family. Okay, where, people you know, just request him. Yeah, and exactly. Can and then, yeah, exactly. And so yeah, okay, yeah, you so know. please go on. Sorry and, uh, yeah, and then he said oh, he knows that the job is not really there. And uh, it, it, he sometimes wonder if, it's, it's surprising uh, to, to graduates with elitist education to suddenly come out and realize that the job is not there. Mm -hmm. So, and um, he, he felt that education is not, is not adequate. Mm -hmm. He felt it's not adequate. And then, you know, I couldn't give him an answer. In fact, in the book, I said I ended up having uh, another question ringing in my head. So I had to go around and I tried to see if truly, if I'm in their shoes, and uh, I step out of school, I should be able to walk in into any, any, any bookstore and pick up a business opportunity handbook. Uh, we have something very close to that in pharmacy, where you have books with all the drugs, with all the side effects, everything, the dosing and everything. Mm. In business, we should have something like that. So, it is directory. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, mm. with all the businesses, um, with short summaries of execution, uh, uh, and all the things that in, in one book, you can actually have something that can uh, put you on your feet, mm. you know. It, I mean, it, it's interesting because, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm going through it and I'm wondering, how did you get all this? I mean, this is over a thousand business ideas. Um, appliance repair business, appraisals for home buyers, artificial plants, um, air conditioning and refrigeration business, ATM engineering and services, basket weaving, um, biography writing, background check business. You know, very interesting combination of how, how did you come up with this 1,000 uh, business ideas? You must have done a lot of research. Yes, yes. Thank you very much uh, for the question. Uh, well, first and foremost, uh, it's one thing that keeps coming up. Um, I don't think, apart from raising up a child and uh, nurturing the child up to adulthood, I don't think anything that's actually difficult as writing a book. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to lie about that. It's very difficult. It's been difficult. But uh, looking back, I think it's worth it because uh, starting from one, two, three, and then you get up to one thousand and um, well, something, and then your system crashes. <laughs> <laughs> and then my my typist said, "Yes, this work is cursed." <laughs> and I said, "No, I'm not going to give up. It's not there. It's not. It's not. It was a gap that we needed to do." So, and uh, progressively, it got up to the point that even my wife said, "Just stop at 500 so that we can rest in this house." <laughs> I said, "No." I said, "We just have to do it." So it kept on. I kept on, and then I also had um, an understanding from my training that processes are as important as the outcome. So what I did is 1,000, when it appeared so big, but if you break it down, I, I asked myself, if I break it down into months, how many would I have to write? If I break it down into weeks, how many would I have to write? If I break it down into days. So when I did the math, I found out that if I, if I go at a steady state of four every day, in, in four times, you know, so I found that. So how, how did you? Do, were you? You must have been observant, yes. you know, watching what's going on around in our yeah. society, mm. and then probably doing some kind of um, book reading, online yes. research, and, mm. and all that. So, uh, is that how it went for you? Uh, 
a combination of both anyway, because um, these are ideas that some of them are just coming up. Uh, some of them, some of them are uh, very original. Uh, original. Some of them are the ones that are popular in this climate. And um, I also thought of uh, developing businesses along existing, you know, the value chain of existing businesses as well. Mm -hmm. So, and apart from I also do consultancy as well in management, in business startups. So I found out that um, these things, you may know it, I may know it, but there's still a lot of people who don't you know, know, you know, who don't know these things. Yeah, the, especially with this UN thing, you know, that is even on. So. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I noticed one, one of the things I observed here, and I've also observed generally, mm. is that it looks as if the so-called, quote-unquote, ordinary businesses are often overlooked by particularly graduates. Yes. You know, graduates leave Nigerian schools and they're looking for jobs. Looking for jobs. They're looking for jobs in an oil company or in a bank or somewhere where they can earn a lot of money. You know, and then many of them think that starting a business requires a whole lot of money to get started with. And part of the reason for that, you know, in, in my opinion, and from what I've seen in your book, is that they overlook so-called ordinary businesses. And there are a lot of them, you know, in this book, I mean, very interesting, concrete molding. Um, you even have something here, caskets. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> exactly. You know, with is, a good yeah. background in the funeral business, carpentry yeah. and engraving on marble or granite stones, which can serve as tomb tomb tomb, tomb stones, stones yeah. at graveside of the dead. And so I mean this is a business, but exactly. hardly nobody looks at those kind of things. And so many of them, you've got a lot of them. I keep reading dating agency. <laughs> <laughs> that's massive in the West. Yes, know? yes. I mean, Even there's here, not much of that here. Or is it starting here now? Uh, well, it's on here. Uh, the, the only thing is that um, well, th there are some people who are actually well known for that, and people feel that because of the confidentiality in that kind of you know business, okay. people are more comfortable. With people they feel that you know have been okay. in that area. Okay, yeah, so there are dating yeah. agencies in Nigeria uh, exactly, now. Exactly, exactly. I know, and they are thriving. Yes, even even. Um, if you go online, you will find them. Mm. You go online. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it may just be security concerns, and they actually just like every other business where there's always concern about security, it affects everything. Not only dating, mm. everything. Yeah. Then the disabled people's rights disabled advocacy. People's rights advocacy. Yes. Um, I saw something for the elderly. Mm. You know, recently I had cause to do a bit of research in that area, and I found it a massive space that needs to be filled in, in Nigeria. Yeah, the geratics. And, so yeah. and then yeah. there, there is, um, you have drama school, those who do drama training, mm -hmm. training for drama and all that, um, elevator installation, um, fashion institutes. I mean, these are things that regular graduates can, no, we're not can, st can start, right? Mm. Yes, 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 exactly. And um, it's not only for them. It, it, my, I, I, I did not forget even those who pay jobs now. Uh, because I noticed that people retire and start looking for businesses to do. Mm. The, ideal, the ideal process is you leave school. The school would have prepared you. There's a chart in, in the book where I said the training would have prepared you with the skill to, to ask the right question, to look for the right information, and then you have your business idea. So even while you're working in paid employment, you're earning your skills, you're associating with the right professional groups, attending meetings, you're reading up, you're going for certification process and the rest of that. So that when you now retire, you then start off. Mm -hmm. the, the, the prevalent one is people retire and start looking for business ideas. Mm -hmm. You should actually have your business idea, even right from school, when you leave school. Before so, you yeah, so, yeah, so when you're working, you're saving up funds, you're building up the right network, you, you, you're building up your competences in that area, so that even when you retire, the transition will be easier than when you retire now and then you now start looking for business ideas. What is the trick in finding business ideas? Well, uh, the, the trick, I don't, I don't consider it a trick anyway, uh, because the question, uh, Start from when do you need a business idea, or when should you have a business idea? I think it should be now. 
um, there is a particular place in the book there where I talk about how you can spare a thought for, you know, um, maybe minutes. It could be daily, weekly. And then look at an existing product or service and begin to turn it in your mind. Mm-hmm. As you try to, to turn it in your mind, it's a different perspective that these things can, you know, just like the way the camera is. You, you thought of holding it and then you can think of having a tripod or maybe having something that can hold it. And then you can think of maybe instead of me standing behind the camera, there could actually be a system of programs that can actually, you know. So I think uh, in coming up with business ideas, it's a conscious, um, voluntary and deliberate action. And uh, it's, it's one of the things that this book will help to address, to bring it up to us that we don't need to, we don't need to lose sight of it. We don't mm. need, even sitting down, even, you know, it, it mm. just keeps coming up. Yeah, thank well done. Uh, yes, Thanks for joining us on the Channels Book Club. I'm so delighted to be on your show. And nice job you're doing, sir. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed today's show. Before we sign out, here's the winner of the quiz we had last week, Kelechi Chukweke, whose last four digits of his number are 5043. So congrats, Kelechi. You can call 0809-111-4809 before coming to pick up your copy of my autobiography. Trust me, it's a great book to read, particularly if you enjoy football. Don't forget we are hosting children at our first children's book club scheduled for 29th of June in Lagos. It will be a time for children to enjoy books and have fun. If you are keen, send the name, age, and school of your kid to 0809-111-4809. Remember, we have very limited spaces. Please join us on any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. My name is Ola Kune Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.